By the same token, this will also have an impact on how Ukrainian resistance to Russia will be studied. Um, you know, the standard argument that we've been making is that, well, you know, we needed to employ violence because we were dealing with a very violent criminal regime, whether in the First World War, the Second World War, or today. That's persuaded some people. And of course, as you know, that's also not persuaded others who believe that the Ukrainians are intrinsically violent, terrible fascists and all these other sorts of things. That particular view no longer rings true. Uh, because now we know that our insistence in the past that the NKVD, the KGB, the Cheka, Lenin, Stalin uh, were terrible people doing terrible things to a largely innocent nation and of course are still doing terrible things to a very innocent nation today. All of that will force a revaluation um, and will lead, I think, to a reevaluation of the OUN, the UPA, Petlura, and many other actors. Um, it will be harder to claim that they're villains. Of course, some people will always claim that, um, but it will be very hard to claim that they're villains in light of what is currently taking place. Uh, a genocide, one of a number that the Russians have committed vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine. Um, and it begins to make more sense that you know, the only way to respond to a genocidal regime is, a lot, is unfortunately by means of armed resistance. Um, there is unfortunately no other way, as we know from history, both Ukrainian history as well as the history of other peoples who've um, been the victims of genocide.